friends welcome to my workplace at ranakhat west bengal india this is a developmental cataract in a 12 year old boy let us observe this surgery after making the incisions and staining the anterior capsule with trypan blue dye a capsular tag is raised with a 26 gauze bent needle and then a utrita forceps is used to do a rexus continuous cavilinear capsular rexus size of the rexus should be not less than 5.5 mm because capsular phimosis is not uncommon in these younger children and now hydrodissection is done i used dr sohel khan's pre chopper in this case to facilitate management of the nucleus but i could not separate the nucleus nicely However, whatever separation was done that helped to some extent in the management of the nucleus. 2% ACMMC has been used as viscoelastic substance. And now the FECO handpiece goes in with its bevel down. and now the nucleus is mobilized it is brought out of the capsular bag on hemi nucleus has already come out and then the other hemi nucleus is also removed the pre chopping helped to some extent in getting the pieces most of the cortex also has come out and now the remaining cortex is being removed with this instrument this is a 23 gauze simco cannula went through the side port only one side port has been made 3 clock hours away from the main incision the size of the side port is about 1.7 to 1.8 mm the main wound is 2.8 at this time and i am going to enlarge the main wound to about 3 mm or 3.1 mm before implanting the multipiece intraocular lens and here it is the main wound is enlarged by the keratome we must cut when going forward and gaze at one side of the wound and by forward movement the wound is cut and now the lens is placed in the sulcus the reason is we may have to exchange this lens later on we may have to if the eyeball becomes bigger if the if there is a myopic shift we may have to change this lens and put another lens and if the lens is in the sulcus it is easier to remove the lens and multipiece lenses are very well tolerated in the sulcus so i placed both the haptics in the sulcus and then visco was removed by the simco visco both from capsular bag as well as from the anterior chamber was nicely removed this is the advantage of 
vitrectorexis. It is much better than primary posterior capsulorexis because we can remove all the visco before implant before doing the rexis. And at this time I am cutting the posterior capsule with vitrectomy cutter, enlarging the wound as much as required. At this time I am removing some vitreous from anterior aspect of the vitreous cavity. And this uh, rexis, vitrectorexis, it does not suddenly extend to one side, it does not happen like that. We can enlarge as much as we want and the vitreous does not come to the wound. Irrigation is over the intraocular lens and we are cutting the vitreous as well as adequate amount of posterior capsule behind the lens. So, hydration of the vitreous is controlled and we will see in a short while that hydration and prolapse of the vitreous into entry chamber usually does not occur with this technique. Vitrectorexis is the term which I heard from Dr. Love. Dr. Love is a renowned pediatric ophthalmologist in Kolkata. He is attached to BBI Foundation. Now he has his own institute. And now I am going to inject a bit of tramsnolone acetate to check if there is any vitreous strand in the entry chamber. This is tramsnolone acetate. And now I wash the tramsnolone hydrate the side port to close the side port. Then I use Simco and I find that there is no vitreous strand in the anterior chamber. No vitreous strand is coming to the wound. One thing I see that there are lot of Tramsnolon molecule, molecule has traveled into the anterior vitreous cavity and there can be a rise of intraocular pressure particularly if the child is a steroid responder. So, I take the cutter again, go into antivitreous cavity and remove some tramsnolone acetate molecules using the vitrectomy cutter. First cutting and then aspiration and lot of tramsnolone acetate molecules came out. And now I am happy, it appears neat and clean, but I have to close the side port again. This is an air bubble to form the entry chamber.
in children, the antechamber tends to collapse because of low scleral rigidity. So, I use an abable to maintain the anterior chamber. Now, after close, after hydrating corneal stroma on either side of the wounds, I form the antechamber nicely. The main wound has gone posterior to the limbus. And when the wound is like this, we do not need to put any suture. There is no leakage from any side. I saw this patient post op and the patient was doing very well. And we can see the posterior rexis, vitrectorexis, very nicely in this picture. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. The message in this video is vitrectorexis is easier and much better than posterior capsulorexis by uterida forceps.